discussion just let us know have a little think about it what's your intuition tell you about who your character is going to be that's starring in your snowboarder game there's your challenge jump into the discussions and let us know that and after you've done that uh, i'll see you in the next lecture wait hold on what's my character name um uh caleb <laughs> baby zuko uh zalaman zalaman right shapes make a little bit oh of a shit what is this what is this in sprite shapes to make some jumps so let's get started new project start process by making ourselves a new project yes sir unity hub click on the new button we'll make a 2d project i'm gonna name mine snowboarder and i'll save it in my repos unity 2d folder click on create and wait a moment for it to work its magic just there while you are waiting for it to fire up, you can go to the resources against this lecture and download the snowboarder sprite assets. We'll be needing those in a moment. So that'll either be to the right of this video or underneath this video, you'll find these, the resources and grab the download of the snowboarder sprite assets. Okay, that'll bring us to our new project. I'm gonna grab my game window and just dock it next to my scene window so I can see these two side by side. Sometimes I'll pop that and say, I don't need you as much. Sometimes I'll drag it over and say, I need you more. But uh, generally I like to be able to see them both because here I can see what I'm creating in my scene and over here in the game window, I can see how it's gonna look in the game camera. Now that file that I suggested you download, we're going to go and find that. We'll unzip that because it's a zip file. On Windows, you can do that by right clicking, extract all and extract. I believe on Mac, there's a similar process where you can easily unzip that. You can see now we've got our snowboarder sprite assets. I'm gonna drag that down into my project just over the assets area. That should work just fine. Release and then it will bring this import unity package window. I'm just gonna click on import will bring that into our game and it's brought in a folder called sprites and in here and just give it a moment to think about things it's gonna go pop there we go it goes pop you can see i've got the top and bottom part of my snowboarder i've got a couple of trees i've got a snow tile low res that's an important one for this lecture and holy moly i hate you twitter <laughs> like yo when i tell you i was like i got so hyper for i was like yo what's going on over here oh my gosh I would like to apo sincerely apologize to all of y'all that came here to watch to watch great gameplay. I mean, game design gameplay. Yep, Baby Zuko is the name of my character. Because I just got distracted OD by Twitter. Holy moly, I need to stop that. All right, all right. Run it back. Back to starting the project. How are you doing, Nefalia? How is your sleep? Download of the snowboard. So I have to download this. Okay, we are, we are now making movements. Right. Keep playing. Keep playing. Okay, keep talking. Okay, that's our new project. I'm gonna grab my game window and just okay. dock it next to my scene window, so I can see these two side by side. Sometimes all right, I'll now we gotta extract this. So extract, this. extract it all. Drag it over and say, I need you more. But, uh, like okay. To see both, so you need to be package file. What type of game did he make? It was a 2D game, right? Work its magic. Layer project. So open up okay. Unity Hub, click on the new button. New project. 2D project. 2D. Name mine Snowboarder. And I'll save it in my repos Unity 2D folder. Click on create and wait uh, for it to work its magic just there. While you are waiting for it to fire up, you can go to the resources against documents. this lecture and download the snowboarder sprite assets. We'll be needing those in a moment. So that'll either be to the right of this video or underneath this video, you'll find these the resources. New folder. Grab the download of the snowboarder, snowboarder folder. Okay, that'll bring us to our new project. I'm going to grab my game window and just dock it next to my scene window so I can see these two side by side. Sometimes I'll pop that and say, I don't need you as much. Sometimes I'll drag it over and say, I need documents oh my gosh can y'all stop <laughs> let's see now that file that i suggested you download we're going to go and let's create it we'll unzip that because it's a zip file on windows yep. you can do that by right clicking extract all and extract in the kitchen where it's twisted like a snow file you can easily unzip that you can see now we've got going to summer summer camp it's a very specific very specific dream what type of summer camp like like horror summer camp with Jason Voorhees or just normal summer camp. Import that will bring that into our game. And it's brought in a folder called Sprites and in here, just give it a moment to think. Listen then. 
back there's a so unzip that because it's okay i unzipped it Windows, you can do that by right clicking extract all and extract i believe on mac there's a similar process where you can easily unzip that you can see now we've got our snowboarder sprite assets i'm going to drag that down oh okay okay no problem over the assets area that should work just fine release and then it will bring this import unity package window. You, you know that would be great if was it unity didn't take like three years to launch launch or start a project where is it at it's still is it busy for one minute motherfuckers yo imagine you're trying to you're trying to do something in a game engine and that shit says yo okay hold on hold on give me a moment give me a moment and you're like moment motherfucker wait hold on you're my program what you mean give you a moment if you don't what so we're just staring at this green screen that's not moving. That's great. That's terrific. That's phenomenal. Well, while I'm sitting here staring at the screen, I can think of another visual novel idea. So, I wrote up the basis of the story, basic. Well, yeah, I wrote up the basis of the story, right? Oh, no, not V-Roy breaking. Trust when I say I get... Oh, it launched. Where is it? Where's Unity at? There you are. Download new version, skip new version. I ain't doing that shit. Next thing you know, I launch a new version, everything breaks. We're not here for that level of stress. The tried and true. The tried and true. You know what they say. Always save your work. And I'm gonna not, I ain't gonna lie. I'm guilty of not following that rule too. Come on, I'm trying to click something here. Not audio. Not that one. Where's Unity at? There it is. Move Unity up. There we go. So, now that we have that going, how do I import shit into Unity? So, we extracted. I suggested you download. We're going to go and find that. We'll unzip that because it's a zip file. Uh -huh. You can do that by right clicking extract all and extract. I believe on Mac there's a similar process where you can easily unzip that. You can see now we've got our snowboarder sprite assets. I'm going to drag that down into my. Oh, I just dragged that into Unity. Literally don't have to do shit. All right, come here. What you. Wait. Okay, 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 okay. Whew. I was about to be like, oh, wait, come on. How come it worked for him but not me? Some all bullshit. All right, so import. Go. Hey, there's everything. Question. Well, there it is. There's, there's everything loaded in. Ha-ha. Reword has such a weird saving system, though. Like, I have to close out the model to say, yeah. So if it crashes in that closeout moment, then you still can't save. Shit's crazy. Eventually, I want to be able to put my v -Void into Unity so I can add, like, different Unity assets to it. Like, yeah, just add assets to it. I'll do it eventually. I'll be able to do it eventually. And then you'll see sprite shape, and we're going to create ourselves a closed shape. So we want it to make a complete loop the whole way around. If we went for an open shape, Wait. that would be something if we just wanted, say, a wall that didn't make a complete circle. But for us, we want to be able to fill the inside of it, so we'll be using a closed shape. You see, in here we've got this white thing. All right, sprite, so create, side, and we've got sprite shape, handles, closed so shape. So far, good. We've got something in our scene. If you hop over Wait, what is this thing? Inside in the inspector, you'll see the sprite shape controller has been added. What? And it's What's that? Got a oh, this shit. Shape profile is defaulted. That's the default one that's hidden somewhere in our packages somewhere. Okay. Find it if we clicked on that. But that's a default one that comes with our sprite shape. So I don't want to go and modify that one. I don't want to modify what's in the package. So, so I'm going to click in my assets directory. Learning so textures. Ah. I find there's We're holding a assets, into the sprite sprites, and within here, right click and create, and we'll find our create up in 2D. You'll see that 2D. there is a sprite shape sprite. profile, and I'm going to click on it. Wait, sprite so shape profile? What the fuck? Oh, there it is. Rename it. So hit F2 on your keyboard. We can slowly click twice on the words that gets there as well, and I'm going to rename this to be Snow Profile. So it's okay. Snow, snow. Profile. 
can see here within my sprite shape controller profile I'm gonna drag my snow profile over to that box and boom, now we're using the snow pro profile so we're using okay one that we've created ourselves so I have a new here, controller of sprites sprite shape I'm gonna rename this to be level sprite shape so if you have a look in here, there's a bunch of information going on. Where? First of all, you can grab this what are you looking at? thingy and swing it around. We're not going to be doing much of that or if any of Did that. he click this? Ah, oh, he what did click that. Here is, what's the orientation as you move around in the world? So you can see huh. we've got our sprite shape here. We've got the top, we've got the side. Aha. Uh -huh. Tell me about, about the different so size of this shape, please. Because I don't know it. Edge, you see where that line is, and then it's filled in the middle. So we've got edge. Is there a fill? Wait, where do you see that? Oh, I see it. Unity is fun. It's actually not as overwhelming as a lot of people say it is. I still think Blender is more overwhelming than Unity. Like, by far. And if that's the case, what you can do is go down and fill in all this particular information in terms of what happens in the outer top left, the outer top right, the inner bottom left, what happens in all of those corners. But for now, we're not going to dive into that too much. But I'm pointing it out so you can see it, and it's demystified a little oh, bit. Oh, so it's all white. If I wanted to change the colors, I could have here. We're going to have one overall shape that we're using for our edge. So and that is... White thing here. We're going to use our snow tile low okay. res. So, just so that, scenes, that over the top snow of the tile, sprites. low res. Got, got the sprite shape edge, drag it in there, and bam, you okay. can see that all right. all of a sudden, I see what we're cooking with. All the way around the outside of our shape has that snow tile. Now, I've got this kind of white blob in the middle. Instead of the white blob, I want this blue to continue. So you see the texture for the sprite shape fill, because we're using a closed shape. I'm going to grab the blue fill and drag that over to the sprite shape fill. Okay. And now it looks like it's nice and closed. Nice. Excellent. So this is a good starting point. And yeah, you can see if yeah. we right, zoom right. out a little bit, this is where our camera currently thinks we want to look. So we get a little bit of a, a perspective of the size of our world. This is not the entire world here. This is just a little one aspect of it. So we want to make our sprite shape bigger. I'm going to click on the sprite shape within my scene window. We get some information over on the sprite shape controller. I can click on edit spline. And now you can see there's four dots. Wait, where's edit this spline? This is where the magic happens, my friend. If you click on one of those dots and move it, we can move our shape organically. Did I seriously miss that? Texture updates, which is real cute. You can see there's four dots just here. This is where the magic happens, my friend. If you click on one of those dots and move it, we can Wait, how did you get those dots? We get some information over on the sprite shape controller. I can call oh, edit spline, edit found it. Now you can see there's four dots just here. This is where the magic happens. Ooh. My friend, if you click on one of those dots and move it, we can move our shape organically and our texture updates. Which is Wait, the texture nice. updates? Oh, shit, that's crazy. Move it, updates, move it, updates. Nice. Wonderful. You might say, but I want more than four dots in my world. Four, four points. So just click anywhere. It'll create a new node or a new point. So there it is. Click, and I can drag this out to the side. Drag, drag, drag. Doesn't really matter what happens down the bottom. The player's not going to be seeing it. We're not going to be cruising along there. But I'm just going to drag this out to make a bigger world, a bigger kind of playing level, if you will. Remember, this okay. is the size of one window where our camera is. And you can see over here, this is one size. And I'm going to move this one node all the way over to here. That seems fine for a start of the level. This one all the way over there. That seems fine for the end of the level for now. We can tune this. And I'm going to move this one over there. All the way over there. Oh, shit. Don't, don't look at that. Click just here, move that down below, and move this one over to the left a little bit. There we go. So I've just kind of got a big old boxy kind of thing. Now let me show you how the handles work. If you've done any sort of vector manipulation, okay. you'll be familiar with this. But if I make a new node, look, yeah, so a yellow move this up. Side. If I grab those, that allows me to change how this curve takes. There we go. Move them in and out. This and should look where the center point of the curve is. Nice. Close to this node, then the angle is very close to the node as well. If I move the handle out further, then it pushes where that curve Let's move this up here. Point is taking place. Okay, so I'm just going to move things around a little bit here. Actually, you know what? It's time for a challenge. Let's make ourselves. Of course, of course, it's a fucking challenge. Adding in 
new nodes, and by moving these handles, we'll make some jumps and stuff. Just one thing I'll show you first is if you go and add a no node, and you're like, oh, I didn't want that node, just hit delete. So select the node by clicking on it, hit delete. And then this is going to be a dip. In your world, or if you click on, say, a different game object, you might lose all of your information. Just click back on your sprite shape, and then click back on edit spline. That's important. That will bring up all of these particular nodes. So quick challenge, make a simple level, modify your sprite shape to create a simple layout that might be good for snowboarding and doing jumps and stuff. Don't spend too much time on it just yet. Just something to test our gameplay so that we can get a feel for sizes and shapes. We absolutely Okay, this looks like it works. So just pause the video and play around with your sprite. Just we'll stretch out our nose. It's going to go on. Using sprite shapes is really, really powerful for making platformers as well. So I know we're making a bit of a snowboarding game. Could also be a cycling game. Maybe I like increase. A Cyclomaniacs game. It's a classic. But this is a technique using sprite shapes. That's really I'm really gonna have to move my camera because my camera is like inside. Games in Unity. So there we go. Great work in this lecture. I will see you in the next one. Next one. Edge colliders. In this lecture, we're gonna play around a little bit with our sprite shape uh -huh. to make our snow look a little bit better, and we're gonna add an edge collider so that we can start to use Unity's physics system to make things roll down hills. All right. So since we're at this part of the tutorial. It's good to like, kind of like map out how we want the rest of this shit to go. So we've been, we finished like 13 minutes so far. Excuse me. We have, we're at part 32 out of 48. That gives us like 16 lectures. I'm going to try and get and see how, I, how we feel when we get to 38. See management and namespaces before like I measure the extra 10. So, we're going to do this in like three burst, either three or two burst intervals. The first burst is going to be from here to either 38 or 40. The next burst is going to be either from 40 to 48 or from 38 to 46, depending on how I'm feeling. So, we're going to get started now. Okay, let's get started. First thing I'll do here is to move my sprite shape. So I'm going to click on my sprite shape at this level, hit W on the keyboard, and just move it to the w. start of the level. So you can see here where the camera is. The camera is at the origin, 0, 0, 0. So it makes sense to have my level start at 0, 0. There we go. And I'll just position my world so that it fits. Let me put my camera, my, my camera, my game and camera engine. Okay, so what we're going to do here is add an edge collider. So click on your level sprite shape and scroll on down, find add component, and we're going to search for edge collider 2D. Click and then bloom straight away. You will see that has added a collider so add all the way along our edge shape. collider 2D. Magic collision has already been added. So you can go and modify this. Click on the sprite shape, click on edit spline. Let me see. Go and move any of these nodes and the collision flows let me see the collider well, the collider a powerful thing to know when it comes to making platformers or making shapes or making any sort of product to it this is this is huge i love it now what i want to do next is add a ball at a circle that can roll down this particular hill. like i don't see the collider that much that no well challenge what is to make a ball roll down the hill i'm not going to give you motherfucker all right you know what fine so there's your create a circle move the circle over here bring it up Make the circle have a rigid body okay, now if and a collider. Circle collider. And created a 2D object, then you're in the right ballpark for sure. Click on sprite. Rigid collider 2D. Now, if you went and said sprite, circle, and then add a rigid body to that, add a collider to that, that's perfect. That's a great way of going. About okay, so we already got it. Slightly different. What you mean slightly physics, different? see that we have what is called a dynamic sprite. If I create a dynamic sprite, what? Rename it from dynamic no sprite way. Be, say, Let me see this shit. It 2D already attached with physics. It already dynamic sprite. Circle collider and already has a rigid body 2D. All right. Turn me. Tell me I'm a child. To be a physics thing. I'm just going to line it up in my scene view so that it matches what I can see in my camera view. I can move my camera to that spot. I'm just going to move the ball to the start here. Okay. Now it's important to make sure that it's dynamic. Yes, on the rigid body type, that's important. The rigid body. It's also important to make sure that we've got some gravity on. Yep, that's cool. So when I click on play, everything else should take care of itself. The ball. It's gonna fall right through, right? 
then roll, roll, roll. You see my screen went big just now. Cause oh, I shit. Like maximize on play clicked on for some reason. So in my game window. Okay. So we got our rigid body. I'm going to turn that off. But obviously, if you wanted to have your game take up the full screen. No, I am not, Reverend. Play turned on. Okay, I'm going to turn it off for now. And then just do that one more time. Click on play. All right, play. Roll using gravity and using. Yep, there it goes. System. Excellent. Roll, 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 roll. But you can see there's a problem. We've got a little bit of a gap between where the ball is and where our world is. Oh, there it goes again. Collider is above where our snow wants to be. How do we address that? Well, to be Back honest, down. it took me ages and ages and ages to track this down when I was wrestling with why this is the case. But the fix All right, let's stop. Incredibly simple. First What's the fix? Level sprite shape. And then level sprite shape. Collider. collider. Offset. We want to change that offset. I'm going to drag offset. it down. You can do it wherever you want. I'm going to drag offset. it down. Wait, can I try it again? Let me see it. Oh, much better. Much better. I'm saving before this shit crashes. Alright, now I gotta go all the way out. All of the dots, all of the <laughs> now in here you can see we've got something wait, 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 wait. Jesus me Christ. Go over here, go to spline, edit spline shape. So you want me to do this, highlight everything here. Okay, we're good. Height. And if I increase okay, height. height, it will make all of my snow look bigger. And or I can drag it the other way and make it smaller. So drag it to the point where I think it looks pretty good around about there I think yeah that's not too bad yeah this feels we'll good ball and snow and blue and all right I'll take that now when I scroll back in let's see if it has retained I'm gonna double click on my ball to zoom right into the ball then I'll click back on my sprite shape again there and we go retain the placement for all right let's see what it looks like is relative to the outside of the sprite shape whoa whoa Just a little bit above to hold on let me edit the what was it editing Cool. So there we go. So I've just offset the level sprite. Nice. Now, one thing I skipped over quickly because I gave you assets already that were already cut up nicely. But if you look at this snow tile, you can see in our little preview here, it's got a curve on the end of it to say, well, we could have this as an end point. But in our world, we don't see that curve. That's because I've already edited it in the sprite. Editor. All right, we're done. So I want to show you that process in case you're using any don't, other. Don't show shape. me that. Don't show me that. Sprite editor. And you can no. See Green line. So I've already said Go over here. Graphic I'm using sprite editor. The shape that Here's the sprite editor. Sprite shape is to go from here down to here. Hopefully you can see those green lines. I was really hoping he didn't go into the sprite editor. Say, well, maybe I want it to go from there all the way to there, and then click on apply. And now when we go back into our into our scene, you can see that the curves are being apply. And it oh, tile it looks terrible. This is not tiling. That's an important thing for us. Fix this shit, please. Brethren. Revert. Just a little bit past where the curve is just there. Where the curve ends. Right there. Apply that. My man decided to make my shit look ugly. He's like, yeah, we're going to test you real quick. might be wrestling with is if your fill isn't texturing properly, particularly if you've brought in your own asset for this as well. And I totally encourage you to use different so if you click on the blue fill, you need to make sure that where it says the wrap mode, we wrap have mode? Wrap mode where? Repeat. Oh, there it is. is clamp. It might give you some weird What's clamp repeat? look like? Um, no. Artifacts, particularly repeat. if your fill isn't just one color. Mind you, oh, one color it's one color, so we're chilling. I was like, nah, yeah, so it's crazy. We're good. We're chilling. So click on my sprite uh, tile for the snow. In here we have repeat as well. So just want to point those things out. I really encourage you to go add your own assets to this so it looks different. And in this lecture, we've gone and added an edge collider. I'll add that as a note. Like, I'll change the asset later. Sprite shape as our world, that our Next one. Cruising. All right, let's go. We'll be creating ourselves a follow camera using Ooh. cinema machines. Ooh, so, cinema machine. Hold on, we'll what the fuck's that? A little bit about what is cinema machine. Well, so he's answering my question. Package that we're going to import that lets us manage multiple cameras. Wait, hold on. Cameras. 
scene, if that's what we'd like to do. I'm trying to figure out why this is blacked out. Hold on, I'm going to refresh the page. Because it shouldn't be blacked out. On our screen, we're looking through the main camera, the game world. So if I jump back here, when we click on play... Huh. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to do some, 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 some hackery. Let's get rid of that for a second. Mm, 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 mm. Actually, I'm going to keep the video playing so I can at least like follow along. see the game. It's coming through our main camera. And on our main camera, we're going to add a Cinemachine brain, which is going to handle the logic for saying, what is it that you would like the main camera to be doing? And in the Cinemachine right. brain, we can then point different virtual cameras they're called virtual cameras that the cinema machine brain manages you say one camera is for if you go all right off with this one on our screen we're looking through the main camera all right we're set up again game world. So if I jump back here when we click on play we see the game open now y'all can see it on our main camera we're going to add a cinema machine brain which is going to handle the logic for saying what is it that you would like the main camera to be doing and in the cinema machine brain we can then point different virtual cameras they're called virtual cameras that the cinema machine brain manages you say one camera is for if you're going really fast and a different camera is for if you're going really slow and another camera might be zoomed in all the way if you're doing a, a power up or another camera might have another sort of behavior so okay project, i always wondered camera controls camera, and it's going to be managed by the cinema machine brain and it's going to be telling the main camera here's what i want you to do all right gave you every single possible package then every project is going to be gigantic in size and take ages to load so what do i need so they allow us as a user to choose which packages we want okay we find packages we go up to window, window. We find the package manager which is a okay Click on that it'll bring up a new window for us we can dock this next to our scene window there we go it's oh i'm trying to finish up this game um a game design idea Packages in projects. Unity registry. Because right now I'm just trying to figure out how to make a dynamic camera or a cinematic camera in the game. Wait, where? Oh, there it is. Cinemachine. Install. So I'm trying to make this snowboarder game within the three hours that I have that I usually do game design for. I'm hoping to like finish this off, quickly do a TikTok video, upload the TikTok video, upload the video to YouTube, upload the VOD to YouTube and call it a day. Yep, I installed it properly. Wait, I want this. I need to make this smaller. I don't know why this is so large. Why is my inspector so goddamn large? Component. Cinemachine. Oh, it's at the bottom. Okay, right click, Cinemachine. Okay, there it is, virtual camera. Alright, homie, you may need to you may need to speed this up a bit. You chatting, homie. You starting to chat. Okay. Rename VC follow camera. Where? Where are we looking at? Aim. Oh my gosh. Body, what is going on here? At the moment is changing the body so that we use the framing transposer. That is a way of saying we're trying to frame transposer. There we go. And we're going to be moving around the body of our virtual camera. Now, you see, under the Cinemachine virtual camera module, we have this field called follow. If I click on the so, select, what if I say follow? We've just got the ball, we don't have a player yet. So, let's double click on the ball. Now, you see in our game, we yeah, follow dynamic spray. What happens if I... Yeah, I was going to do that too. I was like, what happened if I hit play? Oh, shit! Oh! 
Oh shit! Yo, we've definitely evolved. Yo, we have leveled up. Damn. Yeah, this is mad smooth. When I was like learning game design, and you had to like give the Unity camera its own script to follow. Shit, that was that was jagged compared to this. Look at this shit. Shit's fire. So is that like aim? Screen X. 